All right, we got a 2003 or 2004 Honda Odyssey in it. And what we're going to do today is put the radio in it. The radio that's in it, uh, the value is messed up on it. You can get it. If you turn it up, it'll go way up. Uh, and then it won't go back down. you got to wait and kind of play with it. And finally, you can get the volume to go back down. So basically, uh, it'll blow your eardrums out or you can't hear it. Um, so every once in a while, you can kind of get it in a spot where you want it. But then if you decide to turn it up or down later, then you got to go through the whole thing again. So we're just going to pull that radio out. I'm going to put a Amazon Double Den radio in it. It's pretty cheap, about 45 bucks on Amazon. And... Uh, it's got Bluetooth, mic, pretty much backup camera, which I don't, I'm probably not going to install that. Uh, a lot of stuff on it for the price. The only thing it doesn't have, it doesn't have a DVD player, but it has, uh, you can put an SD card in it and all that. So it's, uh, it's got, of course, uh, auxiliary and all that. So it's a really good radio. And the reason why I know this is because I put it in my Honda Element about a year ago. And I've had, I actually kind of love the radio, uh. The Bluetooth works right away. I don't, I don't have to mess with that every time I get in the car. Um, and it just does what it's supposed to do. Yeah, I've, I do have, I have had one problem with this particular radio that I kind of went over in the last review I did of it. But uh, every once in a while, probably once a month, or a couple times a month, you'll start the car up. And I drive this car, you know, multiple times a day to go to auto parts, junkyard, uh, just running around. So I drive the car quite a bit. So you're talking, you know, Several start and stops. Uh, every great once in a while, you'll start it up, and the radio comes on like normal, but it says 12 o'clock on the clock, and it just, you can't do anything. You can go through the menus on it and stuff, but it won't play the sound. So it's like it's froze up, but it's not froze up, because you can still go through the menus, but there's no sound. You can't change the clock or anything. So usually when that happens, I just turn it off and then turn it back on, and it's fine after that. It usually does that once or twice a month. That's the only complaint I've had with that radio. It's never gotten worse. Uh, and like I said, I've had it for a year, so I can live with that. Uh, but anyway, I'll go ahead and show you what we got and how to install it on this, and then we'll go from there. But uh, And like I said, it's a cheap radio, but don't necessarily scare, don't let that scare you away. Uh, it's cheap, but from my experience with it, it's actually a pretty good radio. I mean, it's not going to win any stereo awards or anything like that as far as the kind of power it puts out or whatever. But uh, for a daily driving radio that has Bluetooth capabilities and pretty much anything you'd want to do almost uh, for the money, you can't beat it. So it's cheap, but I, in my opinion, it is a really good radio. So anyway, I'll show you what I got, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I got the box open. I haven't taken it out yet. Uh, Whenever I do a uh, radio, I always get the radio itself. You can see it's a pretty small box. But it's, with it not being a DVD player, it's not, you don't have to. You want to get an install kit for your interior. Uh, this is a cheap one I got off of Amazon. And this, I've used this before uh, on my Honda Element, and it works fine. Uh, you just need something to mount the radio. Because these radios are not, they're not universal. They're universal, but they don't go in each car, obviously. And of course, it's for somebody that's never installed one or doesn't know that much about it, so that's why I'm going over this. But you need an install kit for your car. And this is for uh, Honda Double Dead Multi Kit 1990 06. So, and I always get the wiring harness. And this is just some Honda Power Speaker Connector. The radio that's in the car is just, a, just your basic radio. Now, if you have. Uh, Navigation, all that stuff. You may need a, a different wiring harness. This is just your basic kind of wiring harness. I always get one of these. I don't like cutting off, cutting up the factory wiring under the dash. Uh, this is stuff that fell out of the radio box. I don't like cutting the wiring harness under the dash. I have to keep it that way if you ever want to sell it, keep the radio or whatever. You just pull it off with the stock one back in. So this is stuff that came out of the box. For the radio, pull the radio out, kind of show you. So, I mean, the screen's not on. This is what you get. A lot of the new radios now don't have DVD players, so they're a lot more they're smaller and not as uh, deep as they used to be. It actually makes it easier to wire them in uh, and get everything tucked back in there. This is the front of it. It's got some knobs and stuff. Uh, this is standard stuff. So this is it. Uh, there is a there is a name for this radio. I can't remember what they call it.
all this. You know, it comes in a plain box. It's made in China. Uh, there is a name for it, though. I'll look it up and find out for you. I'll put a link down below also for the radio that I got. Uh, so what we're going to do now on this radio here, this is the wiring, <coughs> the wiring diagram. Now it comes with your factory, or it comes with the wires to plug into the radio. And what we need to do is you're either going to plug in. These came with the radio. This is uh, what we, all we're going to be doing. This is the, the high the wiring harness. We're just going to be connecting these wires to these wires. And then hopefully we'll have power and sound and all that. Uh, so one of these looks like it's accessory ground, power, memory. So that'll be that one. And this will be all the speaker wires. And they, they actually may match up with uh, the Honda. I mean, it's pretty universal, but uh, you never know. So I always check. What you want to do is get yourself a wiring diagram for your car, for your radio, and just double check uh, and make sure, you know, the right rear speaker is a certain color that goes to the color for the radio and so on. So it's pretty basic, but we'll go over it and then uh, pull the stock radio out and put it in the car. All right, so I went ahead and pulled the wiring diagram up. Uh, this is the, all the main radio controls here. This here goes over to a CD player. So if you had like a rear CD player or something, uh, you'd have this. We're going to ignore that because we don't have that. So what we're after right here is this. And we're just going to compare uh, these wires to whatever the radio wire harness is. You're going to have a power, a uh, ground, obviously. Uh, and then all your speaker wires. And then, uh, you know, some kind of memory wire. So you're going to want to get one of those for your vehicle unless you know... Uh, Unless you know the wiring really well or whatever. So it's usually pretty straightforward. Usually yellow is like your memory. And then red is your power. Black is ground, obviously. And then uh, this one has the backup. One for the backup camera and uh, all that. So anyway, we're just going to concentrate on the main power wires, ground, and the speaker wires today. Because we don't have anything fancy. Uh... We're not going to put the backup camera in, um, and this doesn't have, I don't believe it has a remote CD player. It actually might because it's a pretty fancy, I see it's got full leather interior and stuff, but I don't think it does. So anyway, we'll go back over to the work, work uh, bench and we'll line them up and uh, start putting them together. All right, I did a video uh, a few days ago about solder and seal connectors on, on uh, radios. You may disagree with me or whatever, uh, that's your prerogative. I usually just, this is about the only time I ever use these. I use the little plastic plug connectors and I just uh, go through, you're going to strip the wire. These wires are really thin. Yeah. I have to adjust my tool here, but we'll strip the wires and then we'll start putting together. We're actually going to use plug connectors. And this really is the only time I ever use plastic plug connectors on a vehicle. But uh, like I said, uh, it's in a area that's pretty protected, and as long as you install them correctly, and then wrap them up afterwards, you should be fine. So, you know, the other option is you can put them just use electrical tape, which I don't recommend doing that at all. A lot of people do do that. You could solder them, uh, which I think is kind of overkill on a radio, but you could do it if you wanted to, and uh, or use the butt connector. So that's kind of like the three options. Uh, for, for installing it and uh, anyway so I'm going to do the butt so I'm going to go ahead and strip some of these wires out compare the uh, wiring diagram and I'll, I'll tell you if you're doing the ISE I can tell you what the wires are uh, as we go alright so this uh, sheeting on this stuff is pretty stuff it's pretty stiff It's my uh, wire strippers aren't working like they usually do so I'm just going to go ahead and use a pair of side cutters and uh Strip it back. If you've been doing it a long time like I have, you get kind of a feel for that without breaking the wire. So this is the speaker connector from, from the radio. And this is the power, basically the power connector from the radio. 
Now, this car does have radio controls, a steering wheel, and this, ra this radio does not support that, so we're going to lose that. Uh, this is your memory wire, the yellow. Red's power, black's green. And then uh, the gray one is the backup camera, I believe. And the white one is... It's not Mark. It's Mark, but I can't read it. So I don't know what the white... I have to look on the instructions. So all you, I got all those stripped back. So all we're going to do is just take... Uh, The wiring harness we got from Amazon, uh, that's a HAO 8B, it's for Hondas, covers a lot of years, so you have to look up yours and make sure, and we're just, now these are pre, pre-cut, so all we gotta do is just, all we're gonna have to do is just pull this, uh, insulation off, and then these are ready to go. Alright, on these butt connectors, they're not real reliable, so I like to use the spike on the wire strippers and uh, that way you can penetrate the wire and the butt connector. I've already got one side in on this one and you're just putting, I'm just doing the ground right now black to black and you're just putting them in and squeezing pretty hard. You can see there, now you some people will just squeeze it and not put the spike in there. You can just bend them in. Uh, that's kind of unreliable. I like to use the wire strippers with a little spike in them. And that kind of gets it in there and grabs it. So we're going to go ahead and connect all these up. Uh, like I said, yellow to yellow, red to red, and then the speaker wires. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. You just strip them back, put them in the butt connector, and then uh, squeeze it. Uh, I'll let you know what the wires are after I get this wired up as far as the speakers go. They probably match. The radio it's usually pretty universal, so on Honda, it's probably whatever the right rear is. It'll probably be the same color on this harness, but I'll let you know either way. Um, just so you can double check it. And then once we're done with that, we'll just plug it into this radio and install the kit. All right, so here it is wired up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up like I did this with the black tape. On here, uh, <clears throat> the wires and the wiring harness for the Honda Odyssey, the 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 color was way off from the color on this, which is supposed to be a Honda uh, attach, uh, pigtail. So I just did the logical thing, hook the green to green, white to white, gray to gray. <clears throat> so, um, so you run into that sometimes, especially with these universal. And I'm, I know this plug in particular covers a lot of Hondas for a lot of years, like 96 to 06 or something like that. It's several years, so... You might run into that with yours where the wiring harness or the wiring diagram doesn't necessarily match up with the plug that you got that's supposed to work with the Honda. So just go and hook up the wires, the same colors, and uh, you should be fine. So next thing we'll do after I wrap this up is I'm going to uh, pull the old radio out and see how it mounts in there. And then we'll <clears throat> get the mounting kit for the radio itself and try to mimic how it's mounted in there. And then uh, be almost done with this. So... We're going to the car next, take that radio out, and then uh, match it up with the install kit that we got for the for the new radio as close as we can so we can put it in there. All right, so these Hondas, all we're doing, we're just getting this panel off right here. And we may have to uh, pull the lever down, the transmission lever down. On some of these cars, they don't have uh, the light switch here. You can take this little cover off and just kind of put your finger in there and pull it. This one didn't, so it's a little rough. It was a little hard to get off. It's real tight around the interior here. So I just took one of these interior tools and got up here and pried it out finally. So we're just going to pull this out, and you're going to have electric connectors behind it. Just unplug those, and we'll have to pull the shifter down probably to get the panel out. And then once we get the panel out, uh, we can get to the radio. But like I said, this is just a pull out. There's no, there's no screws or anything, and it's real tight. To the dash all the way around it so you got to get something up behind here and just once you get it going a little bit it'll come out the rest of the way so i'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the connectors back here and pull this all the way out and then we'll get this radio all right so the factory uh radio only has four screws holding in they're back here on the install kit they're universal so you're gonna have to do you know uh try to configure as close as you can to the factory so that's what we did here on this radio. Um, this is the install kit. And we're going to use these mounting tabs back here. We're going to tr uh, 
trim this one off and I've already trimmed off one right here in the middle and I trimmed off a couple on the bottom and it's just kind of like a tryout area with this kind of stuff uh, you know this is for the Odyssey obviously and uh, you got to remo remove some stuff to get this to fit down in there and you got to figure out which holes you need to screw into on the Odyssey I just screwed it into the top one and then the second to the bottom on this one on both sides and these are marked one has an L one has an R on it so just line them up and go from there on that. So all we gotta do now, I'm just gonna trim this off and the other piece off, and then we'll just put our four screws in, obviously plug it in, antenna and all that, and then it should work. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, knock those pieces off that we don't need, mount it up in there, wire it up, and then we'll test it before we put the uh, plastic piece back on. Oh, hold on. All right, so we got it all back in, uh, got the four screws in, Put this panel back on then they got this little trim ring that goes around it the universal kit comes with one but uh this button is so close to the edge here that you can't use universal you have to use the one that comes with it this comes with the radio uh, you can see here it's got a menu it's all touch screen you can go in hit the settings change your clock audio all that stuff uh this is your fm what it looks like kind of like an old school player it's got the little needle Got the old school needle on it stuff uh you can got the presets pretty much everything that you would need it also has the p-link for your phone uh which actually works really good on it um it has the bluetooth and all that so it's a pretty decent little radio for 40 bucks uh i've, I've been using like i said i've been using it for about a year and i really like it so if you have an older car like this, I mean, some of these newer cars have radios that are much nicer than this. So, obviously, if you have an older car, though, that uh, needs a double DIN, and you want something that's got Bluetooth and, and uh, auxiliary, it does take uh, SD cards and stuff, so you can put music on there. And, like I said, you can Bluetooth your phone, play music, so uh, if you got Spotify or whatever. So, uh, for the money, it's actually a really good radio like i said i've had mine for about a year and have had really any issues i've had that one issue that i mentioned earlier and that was it so anyway that's about it for a radio in a 2004 honda odyssey i'll put the links down for the actual radio itself so you can find that and i'll put the uh wiring harness and install kit links in the description that way you can find that if you got a honda odyssey or some other honda these kits are pretty universal you will have to do some modifications to them Get them to work for your particular car, uh, but it's nothing you know, anyone can pretty much do it. Just got to use common sense to kind of line things up and then trim wherever you have to trim or take pieces off or whatever. But it's not too bad. So I think that's it. We're gonna finish this up and then get ready for the Super Bowl tonight. As always, thanks for watching and God bless.